objectives and very good objectives. Have you heard those terms separated before? It actually comes from Lydia and Omrod of way back, but few academics seem to be interested in the split. But the split is logical and necessary if you think in terms of where should I get my literature from? So the two kinds of secondary objectives, if we have a primary objective, which is the big thing, sometimes people say the aim of the study, and then you have secondary objectives. Now the secondary objectives, we take the huge big thing that is the primary objective and break it up into smaller bits that are manageable and doable, then these objectives, secondary objectives, you answer using the same or different methodologies, and then when you answer them together, they form the space of the primary objective. Right. Actually, these secondary objectives, I can call the empirical objectives. Because we're going to deal with them in an empirical way. So that's what we're going to do in the research. But there are two, uh, there's another set of objectives as well. These are the theoretical objectives. Where do they come from? They tell you where in the theory to go and look. So if somebody says, I've read and I've read and I've read and I'm bottleneck, I don't know what to put in the chapter on the literature review, I say, but then you go identify theoretical objectives up front. Because if you define the theoretical objectives up front, it should give you the headings in the literature review. So to answer the empirical objectives, you're going to need data, right? That requires data from you. But to get to the theoretical, uh, sorry, the empirical objectives, you've got to go into theory, but where in the theory? to answer these. So that brings me to, here are some possible objectives. These are the empirical objectives of a study on social media. So to determine the potential of social media as a vehicle of the day. So these are the empirical objectives. So they would be the ones that he's going to study with data, then come up with an answer to the primary objective. So he's going to do that, right? There's the empirical objective. Sometimes you will use surveys to answer these empirical objectives. If you look at what he wants to do, you'll see that he needs data for these uh, empirical objectives. Part of those would be qualitative data, and part of those would be quantitative data. Right, so he's going to do a mixed method, and he's going to find his data qualitatively or quantitatively. But where would he look for the work that is already there? You look in the theory and we write down the theoretical objectives which would be what is in the theory about this. So he's going to describe related con concepts and theories. I'm not going to read through that. So there are the theoretical research objectives. So these become the headings of the literature study. He's going to look at social media, business intelligence, competitive intelligence, marketing intelligence, social CRM, and decision making. There they are. Now he's structured. And he gets them by knowing what he wants to deal with in terms of these empirical objectives. And the empirical objectives are the ones that we then divide between quantitative and qualitative if we feel we want to do a mixed model. Or we could just do a quantitative or a qualitative study. It doesn't matter. So I ask them to do both the empirical objectives and the theoretical objectives because that helps me in putting them together. These are the literature elements. And these I use to phrase the questions in the survey. So here are the empirical research objectives. They help me in terms of the qualitative interviews for the survey. Right. What would be the questions that I will ask? Oh, sorry. I will get my questions from the literature. On the qualitative side, of course, I can get the answers also from the interviews, join that with the literature, and do a second round on the quantitative, where I join the qualitative interview answers or responses with the literature. 